Hey, what's up? I'm Henry, and I've got a wild story for you. But before I dive in, do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, all right? Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. I'm this 32-year-old software engineer living the dream with my smoking hot wife, Emma. She's 30, killing it in marketing, and we're about to have our first kid. Life's good, you know. We just moved into this sick house in the burbs. I'm talking picket fence, big backyard, the whole nine yards. Emma's all excited decorating and stuff. She's like, babe, we need to get curtains for the nursery. I am psyched, but there's this nagging feeling in my gut. See, growing up, I had this uncle, Frank, total jerk, always putting me down, making me feel like dirt. I remember this one time at a family barbecue. Hey, little Henry, still playing with your toy computers? When are you going to man up and get a real job? I was 12, for crying out loud. But that's Frank for you. Always had to be the big shot. Anyway, we're planning this housewarming party, right? Emma's eight months pregnant, waddling around like a penguin. It's adorable. She's like, Henry, we need to invite your family. I'm thinking, great, that means Frank's going to show up and ruin everything. But I can't say no to Emma. She's got that pregnancy glow and all. So I call up my folks. They're cool, but they never stand up to Frank. My dad's all son. He's family. We have to invite him. Then there's my sister, Laura. She's Frank's number one fan. Oh, Uncle Frank is so misunderstood. He just wants what's best for everyone. Yeah, right. Thank God for my boy, Mike. He's been my ride or die since college. I'm on the phone with him, venting about Frank. Dude, why don't you just tell him to take a hike? It's not that simple, Mike. He's family. Family doesn't treat you like trash, man. You gotta stand up for yourself. He's right, but it's easier said than done. Emma overhears us and waddles over. Honey, is everything okay? I put on my best fake smile. Yeah, babe, just party planning stuff. She sees right through me. Is this about your uncle? I nod and she gives me this look. It's like she can see right into my soul. Henry, this is our home, our family. If he can't respect that, he doesn't need to be here. God, I love this woman, but I know Frank. He'll show up whether we want him to or not. And I've got this sinking feeling that this party's going to be a disaster. As I help Emma up the stairs for her nap, I can't shake this sense of dread. It's like the calm before the storm. But hey, what's the worst that could happen at a housewarming party? The day of the party arrives, and I'm a bundle of nerves. Our new place is decked out, and Emma's gone all Martha Stewart on the appetizers. Guests start rolling in, ooing and aahing over our digs. Man, this place is sweet. Mike says, clapping me on the back. You've really made it, dude. I'm about to respond when the door swings open. In walks Uncle Frank, uninvited and already three sheets to the wind. Great. Well, 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 he slurs, stumbling in. Look at little Henry, playing house. Bet Daddy's money came in handy, huh? I clench my fists, ready to throw him out, but Emma puts a hand on my arm. Don't, she whispers. It's not worth it. She's right, but man, it's hard to keep cool. Frank's making the rounds, getting louder with each drink. I overhear him talking to my sister, Laura. Can you believe this place? Kid's got more money than sense. Probably gonna lose it all in a year. Laura just nods, always the enabler. I'm about to say something when Emma tugs on my sleeve. I'm not feeling great, she says, looking pale. I'm gonna lie down for a bit. I help her upstairs, worried. You okay, babe? She nods weakly. Just tired. I'll be fine. I head back down, keeping an eye out for Frank, but he's nowhere to be seen. Weird. I'm chatting with Mike when we hear it. A scream from upstairs, followed by a crash. Emma! I yell, taking the stairs two at a time. I burst into our bedroom and freeze. Emma's on the floor, clutching her belly, eyes red and swollen, and there's Frank standing over her with... Is that pepper spray? What the hell, Frank? I shout, rushing to Emma. I... I thought she was a burglar, he stammers, but he can't even look me in the eye. A burglar? In a maternity dress? I'm seeing red now. Chaos erupts. Someone's calling 911. Mike's holding me back from decking Frank. Laura's crying in the corner. It was an accident, Frank insists. I heard a noise, came to check. Bull, I spit. You followed her up here, didn't you? The paramedics arrive swarming around Emma. I'm torn between staying with her and dealing with Frank. Sir, we need to take her to the hospital, one of them tells me. 
The pepper spray could affect the baby. My world stops. The baby. Our baby. As they wheel Emma out, I turn to Frank. He's backed into a corner, looking like a cornered rat. You're done, I tell him, my voice ice cold. You hear me? Done. Now, Henry, he starts, but I cut him off. Get out of my house, now. Laura tries to intervene. Henry, it was an accident. Uncle Frank wouldn't... Save it, Laura, I snap. You didn't see what I saw? The cops show up, start asking questions. Frank's story is full of holes. He can't explain why he had pepper spray or why he was upstairs in the first place. As they lead him out, I catch Mike's eye. He nods, understanding without words. Go, he says. I'll handle things here. Be with Emma. I don't need to be told twice. As I rush out to the ambulance, I hear Frank yelling behind me. You ungrateful little... After all I've done for you... I don't look back. My family needs me. And Frank? Frank's gonna learn that actions have consequences. This isn't over. Not by a long shot. The hospital waiting room's a blur. I'm pacing, my mind racing with worst-case scenarios. Finally, the doc comes out. Mr. Johnson, your wife and baby are stable. We'd like to keep Emma overnight for observation. I nearly collapse with relief. Can I see her? Emma's lying there, looking small and pale. Hey, babe, she whispers. I take her hand, fighting back tears. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault, she shakes her head. No, it's not. It's Frank's. That name sets my blood boiling. As Emma drifts off to sleep, I step out and call Mike. How's Emma? he asks. She's okay. The baby, too. Mike, I need your help. We're going to take Frank down. Mike doesn't hesitate. I'm in. What's the plan? Over the next few days, we start digging. Turns out Uncle Frank's got skeletons in his closet, like a whole graveyard's worth. I'm on the phone with Mike when Laura bursts in. How could you? She shrieks. Uncle Frank's been arrested. This is all your fault. I'm too tired to argue. Laura, he pepper sprayed my pregnant wife. It was an accident. You're tearing this family apart. As she storms out, Mike's voice comes through the phone. Dude, you're not going to believe what I found. Turns out Frank's been fired from his last three jobs for harassment. And his ex-wives? They've got stories that'd make your skin crawl. I'm reeling from this info when Emma calls me over. She looks nervous. Henry, there's something I need to tell you. Frank, he's been saying things, inappropriate things, for months. My stomach drops. What? Why didn't you tell me? She looks away. I didn't want to cause trouble. I thought I could handle it. I'm furious, but not at Emma. At Frank. At myself for not seeing it sooner. That night, I confront my parents. Mom breaks down crying. We knew Frank had issues, Dad admits. But he's family. We thought we could help him. Help him? I'm incredulous. By letting him hurt everyone around him? They look ashamed, and for the first time, I see how Frank's manipulated everyone for years. The next day, Mike and I are going through the evidence we've gathered. Police reports, testimonies from Frank's exes, even a video of him harassing a co-worker. This is it, Mike says. We've got him. But something doesn't feel right. It's not enough, I realize. We need to catch him in a lie about what happened at the party, Mike grins. Way ahead of you, buddy. Remember Mrs. Gonzalez next door? Her security camera caught Frank following Emma upstairs. I could kiss him. Mike, you're a genius. As we're going through the footage, Emma waddles in. She's looking better, stronger. What are you two up to? She asks. I pull her close. We're making sure Frank never hurts anyone again. She looks at the evidence spread out before us and nods. Good. It's time someone stood up to him. I kiss her forehead, feeling a mix of love and determination. Frank thought he could mess with my family and get away with it. He's about to learn how wrong he was. All right, I say, turning back to Mike. Let's finish this. It's showdown time. I've got all the evidence laid out in front of me as I wait for Frank to show up at the local diner. My hands are shaking, but I'm not backing down. Frank swaggers in, looking smug. What's this about, Henry? Finally ready to apologize? I slide the folder across the table. No, Frank, it's time for you to come clean. His face goes pale as he flips through the pages. Police reports, testimonies, the security footage, it's all there. This is nonsense, he sputters. I'll sue you for defamation. I lean in close. Go ahead, I dare you. 
Frank storms out, but I'm not done. The next day, I make an anonymous call to his workplace, just sharing some public records, you know? Two days later, Mike calls me. Dude, you won't believe this. Frank got fired. I should feel bad, but I don't, especially when Frank starts blowing up my phone with threats. You ruined my life, he screams. I'll make you pay. Those voicemails? They're gold. Combined with the pepper spray incident, it's enough to get a restraining order. The family's in an uproar. Laura's not speaking to me. Some cousins are taking Frank's side. But others? They're finally seeing the truth. Through it all, Emma's my rock, and when she goes into labor, nothing else matters. It's a girl, the doctor announces. Holding my daughter, I make a promise. No one's ever going to hurt you, kiddo. Not while I'm around. Fast forward a year. We're at the park, watching our little girl toddle around. Henry, Emma says, scrolling through her phone. You won't believe this. Turns out, Frank tried to scam old Mrs. Johnson down the street, got caught red-handed. He's facing fraud charges now. As our daughter takes her first wobbly steps towards us, I can't help but reflect. Standing up to Frank was the hardest thing I've ever done, but looking at my family now, it was worth it. You okay? Emma asks, noticing my far-off look. I pull her close. Never better. The park's peaceful. No drama, no toxicity. Just us and our little girl. It wasn't easy getting here, but man, was it worth it. Hey, princess, I call out as our daughter giggles and runs towards us. Come to daddy. As I scoop her up, I realize something. This, this is what winning looks like. Not taking down Frank, not clearing out the family drama. It's this moment right here. My wife, my kid, our life together. What are you thinking about? Emma asks, leaning her head on my shoulder. I kiss the top of her head. Just how lucky we are. And how we're never going to let anyone mess with this. She nods, understanding without words. We've been through hell, but we came out stronger. And as for Frank and all the other toxic people, they're just a distant memory now. Our daughter squeals with delight as a butterfly lands nearby. Emma and I exchange a look. This is it. This is what we fought for. A life full of love, laughter, and peace. As we pack up to head home, I take one last look around the park. The sun setting, casting a golden glow over everything. It's like the whole world's telling us, You did good, kid. You did good. And you know what? For once I believe it. We're going to be alright more than alright. We're going to be amazing. The story's over, folks. Now, let me ask you this. If you were in my shoes, would you have confronted Frank earlier? Or waited until you had all the evidence? Was I right to protect my family at the cost of fracturing relationships with other relatives? This isn't just about family drama. It's about standing up to toxic behavior and the price we sometimes pay for doing what's right. Share your thoughts in the comments. Have you ever had to cut ties with a family member for the sake of your own family's well-being? If this story resonated with you, hit that like button. And hey, for more real talk about family, relationships, and overcoming life's challenges, subscribe to the channel. We're building a community here, and your voice matters. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you in the next one.